Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's public safety briefing led by Deputy Mayor for Public Safety, Phil Banks. Following our last speaker, we will take a few questions from the media, followed by some questions that have been submitted by the public ahead of today's briefing. I would now like to turn it over to Deputy Mayor Phil Banks. Good afternoon, Okerman. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we have an interesting, uh, I don't know what we call it, show episode uh, today here. Uh, the theme is going to be about July 4th and July 4th safety. So I am uh, joined today by the FDNY Commissioner, Laura Cavanaugh, and that commissioner is she will be speaking about safety as, as it comes to, as it relates to fireworks. You know, every year that we hear about these horrific stories about people who are playing with fireworks, all too often illegal fireworks, and they, they cause harm to themselves and harm to others. And she will be uh, just informing the audience about the dangers that are associated with that and the safety precautions that you need to be able to take part in. And of course, again, once again, we are joined by our Parks and Recreation Commissioner, Sue Donahue, and she will be talking about safety in parks, beaches, pools, but parks in general, as we will see an increase of uh, people visiting our parks and our beaches as we want to. We want to just make sure that we remain safe as we possibly can. And we are accompanied here, but I think this is the first time we've had her, Mayor's Office of uh, Animal Welfare, Director Alex Silva. And sometimes we forget about the safety when it comes to these pets, right? These, these four-legged furies that we have, dogs, cats, and any other animals. And she will be discussing some of the safety tips that we need to take in consideration, especially if we're pet owners, but even our pets are in our proximity. And that's gonna be very interesting. But at first, we're gonna start off with our NISM, New York City's Emergency Management First Deputy Commissioner, Christina Farrell. As many of us can recall a few weeks ago, right, we saw that the air quality in New York City had uh, dramatically uh, decreased. Uh, I mean, the sky looked like it was like partially brown and orange. And this is coming from the wildfly uh, wildfires that had taken place in, uh, in um, Canada. Um, and now for the last yesterday and today, and maybe in the future, we're gonna see actually an increase um, in that air quality, and that increase is a negative thing, and we need to make sure that we get the word out to our family, to our friends, to ourselves, to be able to make sure that we keep ourselves safe. So we're gonna start with you, uh, Commissioner Farrell. Uh, can you just let us know, give us a briefing about what we can expect and what are the things that we should be doing to keep us and our family safe? Sure, thank you. Thanks for having yeah. me here today. Uh, so uh, as people have seen, as the deputy mayor said, there has been a decrease in the air quality in New York City and really across the state. Uh, the, these past couple days. Uh, the, the State Department of Environmental Conservation has issued an air quality advisory citywide, which has been extended um, until the 11.59 uh, p.m. this evening. Um, we don't uh, think that this air quality alert will continue in the city over the weekend, uh, but things can change, and we know that air quality can change quickly, so people uh, need to stay alert. Um, currently, the air quality index in New York City is in the unhealthy range, which is above 150. Uh, at, we expect this to improve a bit tomorrow and then more on Sunday as rain comes in and, and washes some of this away. Uh, but we encourage all New Yorkers to visit airnow.gov, which is an, a site um, run by the federal EPA, to monitor the air quality index levels where they live. Um, as we did three weeks ago when we first had this, we have been messaging um, a lot through the Department of Health, through Notify NYC, the mayor's office, and amplifying what the Department of Environmental Conservation is um, telling us so people learn about the potential dangers and uh, what they can do, with specifically people with respiratory health conditions. Um, again, as we did the last time, we are still distributing masks across the city. We're distributing them at all firehouses, so thank you. <laughs> all police precincts, various MTA stations, Department of Health, Health Action Centers, and the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs is also um, working with immigrant populations at different sites across the city. Uh, if you go on nyc.gov or call 311, you can get more information if you're interested in picking up some free high quality masks. Uh, just as I mentioned, we are sharing this information through Notify NYC. Uh, this is the city's free emergency alert system. We have more than 1.1 million New Yorkers signed up for this, and they have been receiving messages over the last few days. Uh, emergency management also continues to hold interagency calls with all of our partners um, to help them get the information so they can help New Yorkers stay safe. Uh, for people that are outside for prolonged areas of um, prolonged 
time during today and potentially into the weekend, um, you know, uh, we recommend using a high quality mask if you fall into a certain group. Um, there is additional guidance from the Department of Health and as noted, you can pick up those masks. Uh, also, speaking about Notify NYC, uh, if people are not signed up for Notify NYC, we encourage them to do so. You can go to nyc.gov slash notify, you can call 311, or you can download the mobile app onto your iPhone or your Android device. This um, service is available for free in 14 languages, including American Sign Language and many languages commonly spoken in the city. Uh, we do all different kinds of messaging. I just, in addition to messaging about the air quality, a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, we, earlier this spring, we set up a new group for people that live in basement or cellar apartments or um, are concerned about flooding. We have over 1,400 New Yorkers subscribe, subscribe to that group. Also, um, this week, to coincide with the pool's opening, um, we have a new No Before You Go service uh, where we can um, let you know if pools or beaches are closed that you are interested in so you don't go to those locations and find out they're closed. Also, um, talking about July 4th, from time to time, we will do a short code for people that are interested, maybe visitors are in town or people that are interested in a specific event. Um, if people would like to text July for NYC to 692-692 or for Spanish, text July for NYC ESP, they will see, receive specific information about the Macy's 4th of July celebration, um, safety messages, other transportation concerns and things so they can have a, um, a fun and safe trip to the fireworks. So thank you. So thank you. So that was very important. So just to me, just, so if the air quality index, the number, right, is 150, over 150 is considered unhealthy? Uh, it is, so it's unhealthy to be outside for a prolonged area of time. Um, we are nowhere close to what we saw a couple weeks ago when we got up to like 400. Um, and a lot of, you know, other activities may kick in above 200, above 300, which we don't expect to go to this time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and really it's most important, like with many emergency preparedness activities, people have to understand how it affects them, their family, uh, the very young, the older, people with respiratory issues, and make decisions based on your specific situation. Right. So if someone, I just want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly, if someone uh, wanted to get daily updates about the quality of the air, you're suggesting that they go sign up for your, the system, right? And that's so system. Notify NYC, for, for several years, we have sent out every time there is a air quality advisory in mm -hmm. the city, because we get the information from the state, uh, we do send that out. So mm -hmm. that's one of the kind of alerts that people will get through Notify right. NYC. And it's just, you know, Notify uh, NYC, because, you know, we've been working on that for some time now, and, you know, the commission has done a fantastic job. We look at how many different uh, languages uh, people are tuning into. Uh, we look at uh, how many people that we're trying to build that up. So what we need help from the public, here's our ask, is that if you have not signed up for uh, Notify NYC, that you do so. And you tell one person, tell at least one person, there's just a lot of information, a lot of helpful information, a lot of useful information, and more importantly, a lot of safety information that would benefit you and your family. And it's the last thing is that if you do need a mask, right, you're saying that we can go to any FDNY uh, firehouse or any NYPD precinct and we can pick up a mask, correct? Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. That was fantastic. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, so next we're going to hear from the, our fire commissioner, Laura Cavanaugh, and she's just going to, you know, July 4th, historically, a lot of fireworks. Uh, a lot of us enjoy it. Uh, we all know about the big Macy's fireworks that has been a staple in New York City for some time now. A lot of people do enjoy that. A lot of people come out to take a look at it. Uh, but it's dangerous, right? It's dangerous when you are playing with these fireworks on your own. So for the most part, most of them are illegal. We want you to leave that to the professionals. And Laura, can you just tell us how we can keep ourselves safe? Absolutely, and thank you for saying that. I think it's really important to point out as exciting and fun as, as fireworks can be, they really do need to be left to the professionals. Every year we see incredibly serious injuries to civilians, particularly children suffering terrible injuries, sometimes permanent uh, life-altering injuries from burns to even missing fingers. And so we really want to enforce that. As exciting as it may look, um, these are illegal to sell, they are illegal to store, and they can be really, really dangerous. So please leave them to the professionals. As OEM mentioned, you can get information on where to see the professional fireworks show in the city. 
We also have a fireworks enforcement unit and we've activated them this year. That unit is charged with actually intercepting the illegal fireworks that come into the city. If any New Yorker has any information about storage or sale of fireworks, they can call 311. And if they see fireworks going off, they can call 911. We and PD will respond. When necessary, we do issue summonses and we do confiscate those fireworks. We also, for many years, have had our fire marshals actually travel out of state to Pennsylvania, surveil the known firework retailers, identify New York license plates, and then conduct stops as people enter back into New York City. And that surveillance is currently ongoing. This is all in the interest of safety. We are trying to prevent New Yorkers from getting injured. Please leave the fireworks to the professionals. We cannot say that enough. They are incredibly dangerous. We have our professionals, the fire prevention team, overseeing the Macy's fireworks to ensure that those fireworks go off safely and without a hitch. Additionally, we staff EMS uh, increases all over where we expect large crowds, the Macy's fireworks, Coney Island, and in the Rockaways, we add additional units like gators to work with the parks to make sure people are safe in the water as well. We do see calls go up every year around the 4th of July, particularly medical calls. We see spikes on the days leading up to the holiday and on 4th of July into the night uh, and through July 5th, because we do see that people, especially late at night after celebrating a tendency to set off fireworks. So one more time, please leave the fireworks to the professionals. Please hydrate, it's going to be hot out there. And if you wanna see the professional fireworks, you can go to Notify NYC. Thank you, Commissioner. And you know, we, we really need to push this message because you think about, uh, and we've all read, every year we read about it, right? Someone who's lost their hands, their fingers, suffered some damage. If they had a chance to rewind the clock and do it again, would they mess with those fireworks? And the answer is universally no. So now here's your rewind. Don't do it. You can still see the fireworks. You can still see the bang and the glitter and the pop and the glory, but we need you to be very careful. It is very dangerous. It's illegal. We are out there looking at the people who are, are, are going and buying uh, this uh, contraband, and uh, we just need some help. So pass the word along. Dangerous, don't do it. And uh, enjoy July 4th as always. So thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate thank those you. comments. Okay, so we're, we're another correlation when it comes to July 4th, right? Usually, hopefully, we're gonna have great weather. And when we have great weather, right, we go to our parks, we go to our beaches, we go to our pools. Uh, but there's a lot of safety that's involved in there as well. So Commissioner, thank you again, once again, for coming the last time. You had a great presentation. You had a lot of good information. Yep. And I'm asking you to let our audience know how do we enjoy ourselves uh, and yet remain safe? Absolutely. Thank you, Deputy thank Mayor, you. and good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you said earlier, every year millions of people visit our beaches and pools for fun, connection, relaxation, and I'm happy to say that swimming season is definitely here. Our beaches are open and lifeguards are on duty seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and our outdoor pools also opened this week and will be open at our outdoor pools from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's a little break in between and then from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. until September 10th. And so while swimming offers such an excellent source of recreation and a chance to cool off on the hottest days, we must also really be vigilant in promoting water safety. It's something that's so important to us as New Yorkers and as the Parks Department. So first and foremost, the single most important thing that New Yorkers can do to stay safe at the beaches and pools is to follow all directions from our lifeguards. They are the experts, they're there to keep us safe. So we would just really emphasize to obey all posted signs and flags. And remember, red flags mean don't swim. We talked about this last time I was here. If there's a red flag, it means we don't want you going in the water. And even if you don't uh, plan on swimming, there's still really important ways to stay, stay, to stay safe at our stay safe at our beaches this summer. One is never leave children unattended around the city's water bodies. Really important. We also recommend people wear sunscreen, stay hydrated. And as we enter this busy holiday weekend, New Yorkers can check our website at www.nyc.gov parks. And as the commissioner noted, also be notified about the status of their local pools with No Before You Go, a free service available in 13 languages through the Notify NYC system. To sign up for the new notifications, visit nyc.gov slash notify NYC. Lots of good information there. 
And another thing we want New Yorkers to be mindful of being the 4th of July weekend is to barbecue safely in designated areas. We have at the Parks Department many beautiful free sites across the city in every park in every borough. And barbecuing is one of the best ways uh, to enjoy the 4th of July in our city's parks. We know that. We want people to do that. But we also want people to be safe and follow some rules, um, such as don't when people barbecue, just don't dump your coals on the trees. Mm -hmm. um, when you finish up with your great barbecue, we want you to not dump your coals at the trees. It's really damaging to the trees and the tree roots um, and to our horticulture that we work so hard to protect. So please dispose of your coals properly. There's bins in each park. Uh, they're painted red this summer so people can see them and utilize them effectively. We also recommend please don't use um, propane, only charcoal in our parks. And also just a plug to take what, out what you bring in and um, keep our parks clean, dispose of garbage properly. But also, Deputy Mayor, there are also so many great activities happening in parks around the city. Uh, for example, on Sunday afternoon, you can catch a game at Hoops in the Sun, a great tournament that happens. Or you can get your salsa groove on and learn some new dance moves at Orchard Beach in the Bronx. They have Salsa Sundays, which is so much fun. Or you can pick your favorite spot in one of our parks and watch the many displays of fireworks that we know are going on on Tuesday. We also um, would suggest you can volunteer with members of the Broadway musical Wicked uh, through our Let's Screen NYC campaign this summer with events happening across the city. So you can come out, volunteer, engage in helping to green and support your parks. So lots of good events happening this weekend, but most importantly, we want people to have fun in our parks, but we want people to do it safely. Now, how, how does one find out about all of these events, like the, the hoops in the sun and the ones like, where, where do they go to be able to become On the aggressive? Park Department website. Right. Yeah, lots of good information. So all of this information about the events that's taking place in the parks, if they go into the Parks Department website, which is what? NYCparks.gov. Yeah. NYCparks.gov, then they, yeah. they, be, they can become apprised of all of this information. We list parks, uh, events happening in parks by borough, by park, mm -hmm. lots of good information. And you know, it, I mean, when I, my takeaway from what the commission is saying is that there's not a deprivation of your fun and your enjoyment. It's just a way to do it. You're going to have the same fun. You're going to have the same enjoyment. When you go out to the park, you want the park to be clean. I think what her message is, is that, you know, leave it how you found it so that the person behind you can now enjoy the same entree into the park that you have once did. So, you know, it's, you know, and dumping it like the coal. Some people may do that remotely. They may not be trying to be disrespectful, right. but it is damaging. From exactly. I understand, to the tree roots. To the tree roots there yep. as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And then, of course, on the beaches and pools, we all hear these horrific stories of people who are, are drowned. And I remember when I worked for the Marine Patrol um, many, many years ago, uh, they used to say that the people who drown are people who can swim. Because a lot of people who don't swim don't even go near the water. And we were like, it doesn't make sense. So because you can swim, don't disregard that red flag. Right. And you know what happens if you want to go out? 20 feet, eh, maybe 10 feet will we'll, we'll do it. We'll still suffice the same foot that you're having, right? So please just be careful. We want to exercise some caution. We want to be respectful to your fellow citizens, but we certainly want you to enjoy it. So that was a great presentation, as always, the second time. So we have to make sure we get here again because he always gives like a lot of proper information. So now we're going to talk about our, uh, can I say mutt? Is that a bad word? Can I say mutt? No, pets? Our oh, four-legged like pets? So okay. <laughs> I always tease everybody who has a dog. We have a few people here, and when we do our calls, I hear their dog, and I'd be like, hey, shut that mutt up. And they'd be like, I don't have a mutt. Uh, so I say that affectionately. But now, uh, Alex, you're going to talk us about how, you know, our, the correlation of keeping our dog safe during this time as well, right? Yeah, what yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deputy. Thank you, Thank you for uh, joining mayor. us. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, the, the Mayor's Office of Animal Welfare is uh, housed within the Community Affairs Unit and is well positioned to work with the many agencies that handle animal issues and um, also liaise with the community, with uh, organizations, animal welfare organizations and advocates, and just uh, pet parents, members of the community, about animal issues, not just companion animals, but also wildlife issues. Uh, work closely with Parks Department on wildlife issues and uh, working animal issues. So it's, it's uh, an interesting office. But today, as you said, I'd love to focus on uh, companion animals. And I'm so glad that we're including pets when we talk about safety around mm -hmm. July 4th, because um, many of us who have animals, uh, we know they're members of our family. Uh, they're really family members. So um, 
the first thing I just want to say, because we're talking about the fun of fireworks, uh, for animals, for dogs, it's, it's not always fun, uh, something to keep in mind. Um, all animals, not just humans, of course, are individuals with their own likes and dislikes. Uh, but many animals are sensitive to and afraid of loud noises such as fireworks. I'm sure some of us have dogs who maybe during a thunderstorm or fireworks have seen a uh, very scared reaction. So I think we just have to be sensitive to that, aware of that. And with that in mind, it's best that people keep their pets inside. Uh, you do not want to bring your dog with you to fireworks. Uh, when they're inside, you also want to make sure that doors are closed, any access to the outside, any windows, because when animals get scared, of course, they may run and run outside. And we can't trust that they know where they are, that they're going to come back because of the stress that they're under. So knowing that this is a very stressful time, knowing that this can be very scary for the animals, we want to make sure that they're in a safe space, closed uh, doors, closed windows. Um, and if you are concerned about your dog, you know your dog particularly maybe will react, you know, it's good to create a safe space, a comfortable area in the, in the apartment or in your home where maybe they have their favorite toys, they have a comfortable blanket. It's always a great idea to play calming music, to, uh, if not music, just turn the TV on, have some white noise, because those sudden unpredictable sounds of fireworks, which we might find entertaining, can actually be very scary for pets. Uh, there are some animals who have what's called no, uh, noise phobias, and if they're very sensitive to sounds, you might want to check with your veterinarian about other precautions you could take for your animals. And July 4th is also an opportunity, and I'm glad I have this opportunity here, to talk about the importance of identification, because unfortunately, when animals do escape, they might get lost. We see a lot of lost pets around July 4th, and so it's very important that uh, everyone has proper identification on their animals. So not just tags on collars, but in New York City, it's required that dogs are licensed. And if you haven't already applied for or renewed your dog license, you can do that via the health department website online. This is a great time to do it if you haven't already. Um, and it's also important to microchip your pets. A lot of people hear microchips, they think it's GPS. It um, is not GPS, unfortunately. We can't just always track where our animals are. But uh, it is basically a chip the size of a grain of rice, very small, and inserted under the skin of an animal. And what's great about it is if your pet does get lost, uh, microchip scanners can pick up that chip, even if a tag comes off, a license comes off. So at animal shelters, at vet offices, at police precincts, uh, people will have scanners. They can locate that ship, and that ship is connected with information as long as you update it with your contact information. So very important that animals, and I would say not just dogs, but also cats, are microchipped because we all know they can get lost as well. Um, so licenses, microchips, very important. I will say if you are out with your dogs, I, I hope, uh, again, we have emphasized that it's really important that they, they don't go out uh, during fireworks. It's probably not in their best interest. But if you are out, make sure they're on a leash. Make sure you're mindful of their behavior and their surroundings. And it's always important to read animal body language, um, which can be fun as well. <laughs> and you teach kids about how to you know, read, uh, read human body language. It's the same with animal body language. Um, they tell us a lot with their ears, with their tails, with their general posture with their eyes. Uh, there are some wonderful resources online, so maybe a good time to study up and you can tell, is your cat or dog telling you that they're scared? Um, one other note I just want to point out is that animals play off of our behavior as well. So if we're calm, they're more likely to be calm, and that's important to keep in mind. Mm. And I hope it's not necessary, but because we did talk about the uh, fact that animals may get lost, uh, particularly around July 4th. If you do lose your pet or if you find an animal and you'd like to report a found animal, the best place to go is nycacc.org. That's nycacc.org. And you can file a lost pet report. You can also file a found pet report. Um, and we can hopefully reunite any animals that will go missing because of July 4th. That was a lot of helpful information. <laughs> so let me just try to break this down. One, microchipping, <laughs> right? Is that, is that the correct terminology? That's it, that's it. Is that expensive? Um, different veterinarians can do it. Uh, in New York City, there are some low-cost free uh, services. I know uh, the ACC, Animal Care Centers, does free vaccine clinics throughout the year where they also do free microchipping. Um, and 
if anyone has trouble or is interested in looking for those services, they can also use the Mayor's Office of Animal Welfare contact us form, and I can try to point them in the right direction. But best to start with asking, I think, your vet. Okay, so asking your vet. So that's very, okay, so if the dog is lost and someone comes and counter the dog, they can determine that they have a chip and then the, the owner's contact information. That's very important, and I, I, would, I would maybe imagine, or at least I would hope that most dog owners or pet owners would know that, but in case you didn't know it before, you know it now. And it's so true that the pets are, they're, they're not like a member of the family. They're almost, they are a member of the family. And I remember growing up that I just get very upset with the kids. I never got upset with the dog, though, <laughs> right? Dog was always an asset, like. Right? So that is very helpful. We do get that particular bond there. We just want to make sure that we are very, uh, take note of this during the season. But I, something I just want to follow up. You say that they feed off on the emotions of their owner. Just tell me a little bit more about, about totally, that. Totally, totally. Yeah, I mean, it's the same th people, that way with humans, right? If someone is acting a certain way in front of you, it might mm -hmm. be contagious to how you behave. So uh, if, you, if, uh, if you're jumping up and, uh, up, and, up and down in front of a dog, you know, that's going to agitate, that's going to excite that dog. So it's best that we stay calm and um, always, always good to not um, make uh, an animal more frantic by our own frantic behavior. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, I should add, I apologize for not bringing a dog today. I think I disappointed everyone, <laughs> everyone in this room for that. Next time, I promise I will work on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was great. Thank you very much. That was a lot of helpful, useful information, and I certainly appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. We will now take a few on topics from the, the media, if there are any. Kate? Yeah, uh, James, do you have an on topic? Yeah, James Ford from Pixel Avengers. Uh, first of all, big shout out to the Parks Department for having the big vats of sunscreen at the pool. Really appreciated that yesterday. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah. uh, then also, maybe we combine some of the areas here. I'm just trying to get more information about what's being done uh, to prepare people for the combination of high AQI numbers and the 4th of July weekend, including the fireworks display, and maybe even with pets and high AQI. Mm -hmm. I, I, but I, I'm going to hear a question. Did I hear a question in that? I'm, I missed it. Okay. What preparations, what advice are the various agencies giving? Mm -hmm. And what preparations are you making yourselves mm -hmm. just for this convergence of possible high levels of pollutants in the air and people being out the holiday week? Mm -hmm. Well, one, we just started, right? So part of it is getting information out on forums like here today. But individually, all of the agencies, right, are pushing out this particular message there. When it comes to specifically the air quality, right, Christina has taken the lead from the administration point of view. So uh, though I do enjoy speaking with her, I think we speak via about 100 times a day. It seems like every 15 minutes we're having another call about this air quality because it does play an impact. And what happens is that you can feel healthy and fine, but your loved one or who may have any type of a condition, right, or, some, or someone younger, in fact, uh, could not. So we are pushing this message out as much as we possibly can to make sure that you, self-preservation is the first law of nature. We want you to be aware of this. We want you to take uh, heavy, heavy precautions. Um, I think we've had our uh, Dr. Fasan uh, get this message out as much as he possibly can. So individually and collectively, the administration is pushing this message out because this is something that if you get the information, that we certainly can uh, certainly can solve that. And our events still, the events are still going ahead as usual, um, but just with an eye toward... Yes, well, uh, and, and uh, Commissioner, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we have a number, right, where if it reaches this particular number or we project this number, that some of the events we will stop, others that we will strongly suggest that they cease. I don't think we're at that point, at least the last we're communication not. we had, we had, we're not reaching, reaching that level as of yet. Am I correct? Yeah, no, exactly. So um, we have, we're nowhere close to where we were a couple of weeks ago, and there were some events. Um, there were some city events at Gracie Mansion and other things that we did postpone that week because um, it clearly, I, I think everybody recognized that was not a safe week to spend time outside. These numbers are way lower. Uh, it also is forecast to be better uh, as we go into the weekend. And um, one thing about the air quality, it's only forecast a day in advance. Um, so it's not like a heat wave or hurricanes or snow where we have multiple days 
um, you know, as we can see how it's going. So, um, you know, we don't have indications that we will have incredibly poor air quality on Tuesday when the fireworks are. But, um, you know, again, things can change and we will adjust. I would also note, um, as the deputy mayor said, it, it's all based on your personal circumstance. But I know that the July 4th fireworks can also be enjoyed on TV. Um, you know, and so there's there's other ways to enjoy things um, than being outside. And um, yeah, it just comes down to, you know, people being aware, we will send the information out. If we start to see a large spike or something, which does not seem um, likely at all, we will adjust, we will adjust um, activities. And Commissioner Kavanaugh, I think that we had, uh, when we spoke very recently, you were monitoring the number of asthma calls and where mm -hmm. they were coming from. And if I'm correct, we didn't see an increase during two weeks ago where mm -hmm. we were at the height of it. Is that correct? Exactly. We monitored it two weeks ago to see if we would need additional resources. There were very small increases in vulnerable populations, but nothing that would change uh, a need to increase uh, EMS staffing. That being said, I think, as the, uh, the commissioner has said and you have said, you know, people really should, I think, think about their own personal circumstances. So children, seniors, those who have asthma, um, of course, call us if you need us, but you don't want to need us. So yeah. come pick up a mask from a firehouse, um, you know, stay inside if the air does get worse um, and hopefully you won't need us. But if you do feel ill, right. we are there. Um, we do have additional staffing because of July 4th anyways. That's very good, right? We, we don't want you to need us. But yes. if, you, if you do need us, we will be there. And call. Yeah. Thank you. Earlier this week, the administration reached out to New Yorkers, asking them to submit questions for the officials that have joined us here today. We will now get to as many of those as we can with the amount of time that we have left. Our first question comes from Ryan in Staten Island for emergency management, who asks, at what air quality level numerically should we consider wearing a mask, a mask and should we use an N95 or a regular surgical mask? Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, so, you know, as we've noted, it's different for different people. Uh, I would say that the most important guidance, if the air quality is compromised, as it has been this week, is to really limit your prolonged time outside. So if you usually run outside, um, you know, maybe you can run inside or do a different type of activity. If you were going to have dinner outside, you can move it inside. Um, so, you know, really you want to limit the amount of time outside, but obviously we all have to travel and um, do other things out outside. So, you know, it, it's uh, kind of a, a slope. People with sensitivities, older adults, younger children, those with respiratory or other lung issues um, would probably choose to wear a mask sooner uh, than the general population. Um, as the air quality index um, signifies, once we get above 100, uh, that's um, when it is deemed unhealthy for people in the sensitive group, and then above 150 for the general population. Um, I would say from an emergency management perspective, there are many reasons to have masks in your go bag, in your car, your house. Um, you know, if uh, obviously uh, lingering effects of COVID and people's um, comfort level, uh, if you have allergies and other things um, dealing with this. So, um, you know, this is why we've been giving out the masks at the firehouse, the police um, departments continuously because it, it isn't the kind of thing where you should wake up and deal with it that day. Um, it should just become part, just like if it's going to rain and you bring an umbrella, uh, this is a similar type of thing. So, you know, we're making these masks available so people can have them, work them into, um, you know, where they work and, and uh, live, and then just make those personal decisions based, um, based on their own situation. Thanks. But again, we're not at a level where um, we're at the 200, 250, 300, you know, way up high. Um, so it really is, you know, a personal choice right now. If I may, if I may add, uh, this goes for pets as well. We want to make sure that um, obviously people are taking their dogs out for walks, but best to limit when the air quality is at these kinds of levels that we're talking about. Um, there are certain breeds of dogs that have particular issues. Uh, with, with breathing, you know, the short snouted <laughs> dogs. Um, so just be aware of that. You really don't want to take them out for extended walks when you're, uh, when we're experiencing this kind of air quality. Thank you. Next question comes from Jim in Brooklyn for the fire department, who says, I reside in Cypress Hill and illegal f use of fireworks, especially during these hol holidays is a big issue. How does the city respond to these kind of nuisances? Thanks for that question. If he knows of a location, he should call 311 and give us that location of someone who's storing or selling them. If they are actually going off, uh, he can call 911 and we and PD will respond right away. Great. Next question comes from Allison in Manhattan for the Parks Department who asks, will public restrooms be open for extended hours around the 4th of July holiday? 
Thank you for that question. Um, our public restrooms will be open until at least 7 p.m. through Labor Day. Um, and I'm proud to say we are the largest provider of public restrooms in the city with over 1,400 restrooms um, in parks across the five boroughs. So a lot available, and they're open until 7 p.m. through Labor Day. Thank you. A uh, question for Animal Welfare Liaison from Jacqueline in Queens who asks, do you have any additional tips to ease the fear and anxiety of animals who experience this during uh, hours of peak fireworks around 4th of July? Thank you. No, I appreciate that question. I love that we're, we're thinking about our pets uh, during fireworks. Um, as I said, I think the most important thing is to be mindful that these can be really scary for dogs and for, for our pets. Uh, keeping them inside, keeping the windows closed, the doors closed. Um, you can play, as I said, music or just white noise, uh, fans or a TV to calm them down. They can have a special area. Maybe there's a special uh, corner that they like or a smaller room where you can uh, create this oasis of calm for your pet. Maybe for you too, if that's what you prefer. Um, and treats. Treats are always a great thing to use. Um, you know. You know what your dog, if it's a dog, likes maybe peanut butter, something to preoccupy them, something to distract them, their favorite toy. Uh, and again, if, if your animals, if you know that they're uh, particularly sensitive or fearful, it might be best to check with your veterinarian and they might be able to give you additional tips um, and advice on that. Thank you. And our final question comes from Chelsea in Brooklyn uh, for the fire commissioner who asks, is it safe to have my e-bike battery in my apartment as long as it is not charging? So batteries that are not charging can still catch fire. Those are batteries that have typically, typically been tampered with or are non-certified illegal batteries. So I would ask Chelsea to make sure that her battery is UL certified and that it hasn't been tampered with. If it is either one of those things, um, she should not have it in her apartment. If it is certified, um, she can have it in her apartment, make sure it's unplugged when she's sleeping and charge it when she's awake. Okay, I just would like to close that, uh, give a shout out to uh, a guest that we have here uh, from our office, Frank Hernandez. Uh, Frank Hernandez, in my office we have people from various different agencies. Frank happens to be a lieutenant in the NYPD. This is his last day in the NYPD. He did 21 years of service. Uh, he's always carried himself with a lot of class, a lot of professionalism, and he leaves a trail of no betrayal and no bitter feelings. And in the NYPD, if you can accomplish that, that's not remarkable. That's almost like uh, 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 mini, uh, mini gold status. Uh, so I just want to say thank you for what you brought here to this particular <laughs> uh, You know, when Frank came to tell us he was leaving, we had the joke that he came and said that he was thinking about leaving, wrapping up a career, and we were like, yes, we're finally getting rid of him. But the reality of the matter is, uh, you're a class act and you brought a lot, and I really, really appreciate it. And he's accompanied by his lovely wife, Lauren. And Lauren, like we spoke about earlier, it's a custom in the NYPD that the, uh, your spouse cannot deny you any request on the day his of his retirement. It usually starts with like diamonds or platinum or new cars <laughs> or, or diamond bracelets, and he cannot and not, in fact, deny it. So congratulations to the both of you. Uh, good luck, and we certainly wish you well. Okay, back to you. Then. On behalf of the Adams administration, I would like to thank everybody for tuning in to today's briefing. We look forward to seeing you all at our next one. Have a great day and a happy 4th of July weekend.